Hello, everyone, and good evening, and welcome to today's webinar brought to you by Siksha.com and Santa Clara University, USA. This webinar is an informative session about graduate business programs offered by Leeway School of Business, Santa Clara at, at Santa Clara University. Before starting, I would like to introduce our speakers for today. Our first, pre, our first speaker is Mr. Toby McChesney, Dean of Graduate Business Program at Leeway School of Business, Santa Clara University. Our second presenter is Ms. Susan Marcius, Assistant Director, MS Admissions. And our third presenter is Ms. Shauna Strauss, Assistant Director, MS Admissions and Career Placement. Thank you, all three of you, for joining us today. Before starting, I would like to give a few guidelines to students. Students, this presentation will take around 30 minutes and we will take the few questions at the end of the session. If you want to ask your questions directly to the presenter, please click on the raise hand tab. Siksha will unmute you and you can ask your questions directly to the presenter. I would now request Susan to uh, please start with the uh, session. Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending. I'm excited that you are joining us today and giving us the opportunity to tell you a little bit more about Santa Clara University and specifically the Levy School of Business. I would like to introduce to you Dr. Toby McChesney, who is our Senior Assistant Dean. And then shortly thereafter, we'll start with the presentation. Thank Toby. you, Susan. Thanks so much. Good evening, everyone. It's Good morning for us here in California. Hope this finds you safe and healthy. I do know that the last year has been quite uh, interesting and challenging, but I hope that this finds you safe and healthy in India. It was just talking to my friends here at Chiksha that this time last year, I was actually in India uh, meeting a bunch of prospective and admitted students from Bangalore, Mumbai, and New Delhi. And it's so sad that I can't be there this time uh, this year. But my hope is that uh, next year, 2022, I'll be back in India because it's such a beautiful country. And I would just like to say that here at Santa Clara University, we uh, really enjoy the diversity of our students. We have uh, a lot of students from India uh, for our MS programs and also our MBA program. And really, the diversity that you all bring to the United States is really important. It helps our the classroom conversations and a lot of the companies here in Silicon Valley uh, really like that diversity as well. And also like to say that, uh, as you know, politics are quite the hot button right now these days, but we're very excited about the Biden administration. And uh, do you know that the state of California and of course the United States overall is very accepting and excited about having all these F1 international students. Uh, here at Santa Clara University, you hear a lot more from Susan and Shauna, but in my role as Senior Assistant Dean of Graduate Business Programs, I oversee all of our graduate programs from admissions to student experience to career. And uh, as I speak to you right now, we have 840 graduate business students uh, here at Santa Clara, which is the largest we've had in over 20 years. So the secret is out. Santa Clara is well known for our great graduate programs. We're having terrific inroads with companies that Shauna will talk about. Job placement is very high. And as I'm sure you know, all of our MS programs and our MBA in data science is all STEM certified, which of course helps you with the OPT and CPT process. What's also exciting about Santa Clara is our location uh, in Silicon Valley that I know is really robust. And just know that, uh, again, given our rich diversity and, and location, jobs are definitely plentiful for our students. You'll see that uh, the nice thing about our university also is we have a lot of different types of students. So we have students in the MS programs and MBA, and the MBA students have a lot of work experience. So as you take electives with those students, your network really expands. So with that, I look forward to hopefully seeing your application. Uh, really look forward to seeing you in person this fall. We're still online here in Santa Clara, and most of the United States has classes still online. But we are seeing some good inroads with the vaccine. And I'm feeling very confident that we will be able to bring students to the United States come fall. We actually are bringing in some students from India and China and Taiwan for the spring quarter uh, at the end of this month. So we are seeing more students uh, able to come to campus with a few face-to-face -face classes. And I think in seven months time, when fall hits us, 
we will be able to offer even more face-to-face -face classes for you all. So with that, look forward to seeing you on campus in September. Good luck in the application process. And if there's anything we can do, by all means, feel free to put those questions in the chat and I'll pass it back over to Susan. Thank you. Thank you, Toby. Well, let's get started. So I wanted to um, present uh, some of the numbers uh, regarding Santa Clara University. For those that are unfamiliar with the campus, we are located in Santa Clara, California. We're about 50 miles south of San Francisco. We have some pretty impressive uh, rankings. Uh, for our undergraduate program, we're number 53 nationally by the US News and World Report. Um, but specifically, the Levy School of Business also has some impressive rankings. Uh, we are number 25 for the best part-time MBA by US News and World Report, number 11 for executive MBA by the US News and World Report, as well as our uh, impressive number for online MBA, number 10 uh, by Poet and Quant. These numbers are important. Um, I wanted to mention them because although we don't have any MS rankings here, I do want to let you know that we have uh, amazing professors, academics, and scholars that are teaching the same part-time MBA program, executive MBA program, and online MBA program. So you will get the academics that you need to succeed in your future career. And uh, we think that that's really important for applicants to know um, that we take our scholars seriously and our rankings will uh, prove that. We are located in the heart of Silicon Valley. As I mentioned, we are 50 miles south of San Francisco. And as you can see here, we are literally in the hub of the most innovative um, global area of the world. We are home to places such as uh, Google, Apple, Adobe, um, some that you are less familiar with, um, such as the San Jose earthquakes, um, but we're home to also uh, Lockheed Martin, eBay. So we have a great you know, opportunity and networking for our students in many different ways. Um, some of our current uh, practicum partners are places such as Cisco, uh, Franklin Templeton, Intuit, uh, Oracle, Credit Suisse. And I'll talk a little bit more about those practicums in a minute. We also have a Santa Clara University alumni network, 100,000 strong, many of them working and living within Silicon Valley. So let's get started with some of the programs that we offer. We offer three on-campus programs, business analytics, finance and analytics, and information systems. Our business analytics program blends uh, business along with data analysis. It'll prepare you for one of the fastest growing and most in-demand fields in technology. You will learn these, uh, a toolkit of probability, statistics, econometrics, and machine learning. And you'll also be able to interface with a lot of teams within your company across functional groups to deliver data-driven solutions, very important. Another piece of our program is you will have experiential learning. Uh, again, you will do a practicum project that is required of our students. And this is really your connection to Silicon Valley. Let's get a little bit into the program details. Our business analytics program is STEM designated. So you have the 12 months of OPT as well as a two year extension. We offer a 16 month full-time program. We do offer a flexible part-time program for those who are um, working around Silicon Valley. Uh, but as an F1 student, you would do the 16 month full-time program. Now Santa Clara um, has a little bit different uh, schedule. We are offering our classes in the evening with an occasional Saturday. We have a very robust undergraduate business program. 
Our physical space, of course, allows them to take these courses during the day, which is why we have these graduate courses in the evening. So think of it sort of a, a flip of what you might be used to um, as, a, as an undergraduate. The course delivery is cohort style, which means that you will be taking the same sequencing of courses, particularly for your core courses, um, in the beginning, and then you'll move on to your electives. The business analytics program currently 48 units to complete the degree. We do offer unit-based tuition. So what does that mean? That means that you pay for the number of units that you are currently enrolled in in any given quarter. So say for instance, in your first quarter, you might be enrolled in 12 units, uh, but the summer quarter, you might be enrolled in you know, six or eight. So you only pay for the number of units in which you are enrolled. There are 20 core courses for business analytics. So your business core is gonna be in marketing, finance and economics with math. And then you'll have a programming core of Python and R. And then there's a technology core, which is database management and machine learning. After that, you have quite a variety of elective classes in which to choose. Um, I didn't list them all here, but some of them are visualization, uh, introduction to FinTech, uh, financial analysis, analytics, uh, big data modeling, and deep learning. And then all full-time students are required to, in, to participate in an industry practicum or capstone project. So what is that? That is a real life business problem in which our students are working together to come up with a solution, usually in a group of about, of about five. And as I mentioned previously, um, the industry practicum partners, they can vary from year to year, um, but they are companies that you are, um, that you know of. Career opportunities, 75, uh, I'm sorry, 73% of our MSBA graduates were fully employed at six months at a graduation. And some of the companies where our students are employed, Cisco, Ernst & Young, Google, Apple, Facebook, all the big companies that you know. But as I mentioned before, we're home to um, about 6,000 tech and science companies within our our range of uh, 100 miles plus, so the opportunities are great. Some of the most common roles pursued for business analytics is uh, a role such as a data analyst, a data architect, a machine learning engineer, a business analyst. Those are the most common roles that are pursued once graduating from the program. We offer, also offer a finance and analytics program. This is someone who is really interested, um, not only in analytics, but the finance realm. And I'll talk a little bit about um, some of the roles that students are most likely to pursue. But this program is really designed to prepare, prepare students to evaluate risk um, and investment in management strategies. It also provides the opportunity to understand ethical standards in business and recognize the issue of ethics. Uh, we are a Jesuit institution, so this is very important that we teach these skills to our students. And it will also help you develop and strengthen skills in leadership and collaboration. We have an innovative curriculum for the finance and analytics program and our faculty um, as I mentioned, our scholars, and we also have industry experts that are part of the teaching program. You will also gain experiential learning, just as the business analytics program, again, connecting you with that industry project and connecting you to Silicon Valley. The finance and analytics program is also STEM designated. And we have two different program duration options. The first one is nine months, and the second is 16 month full-time option. And I'll go in a little bit into the details of the difference between the two in just a second. We also have the evening and Saturday classes um, schedule. And the course delivery is cohort style, very much like the business analytics program. So you will follow the same sequencing of classes for your core courses. 
The total number of units to complete the degree is 36 units. Again, you are paying by the number of units in which you are enrolled in any given quarter. Now you do have 20 units of core courses. So you'll be taking courses such as uh, corporate finance and financial analysis, math for finance and analytics with R programming, database management systems, econometrics, investments, and data analytics with Python. You also have a slew of elective options, 16 units in which you will take. Uh, so some of those options are mergers and acquisitions, real estate finance and investments, financial engineering, machine learning, um, introduction to FinTech, data visualization with Tableau, uh, big data modeling, uh, among others. You will also have an industry practicum project. Now this is where the nine month and the 16 month uh, may have a little bit of differences. So the 16 month option in your summer and fall quarter, you will do the industry practicum that I mentioned. Again, a real life business problem, usually in a group of about five in which you will help solve a business um, problem for the company and, and present. It does not mean that in your nine month that you will not have that um, project. It'll just look a little bit different. Um, the reason for that is the nine month option, we're on a quarter system. You would attend courses in fall, winter, and, and spring. You graduate at the end of spring. So for those that are in, that are required the F1 visa, the policy for, of the university is that you must be enrolled in three quarters full time before you can start that CPT. Well, for the nine month program, you're already completed that program. So your experiential learning will still be different um, you know, than the, the practicum project. You'll, it'll just look a little bit different. You'll still get some uh, hands-on with real data and presenting a, a solution, but it'll be um, in a shorter compacted um, period. And again, you would not be required to attend the spring and I'm sorry, the summer and the fall uh, quarters. 75% of our finance and analytics graduates were fully employed at six months out, out of graduation. And I did mention to you that there were three different types of career paths for the finance and analytics program. The first one is corporate finance. So you could work at a company, let's just say at Apple or Tesla. The second is investment and commercial banking. So you could work for a company such as Wells Fargo or Morgan Stanley. And then the third role, um, you know, career path would be private equity and venture capital. So you could work for a company such as Deloitte or uh, Kleiner Perkins. And a sampling of where our graduates are employed are places such as Amazon, Wells Fargo, uh, Cypress Capital, Deloitte, um, you know, just to name just to name a few. We also offer a master's in information system. This is one of our longest standing programs here at the Levy School of Business. And it's a unique blend of business and information systems, uh, courses to help you uh, set that foundation as a leader in technology industry. Uh, there's really the uh, understanding of the context in which business systems operate. It's all about the design, the build, and the management of these information systems. And it teaches you how to apply technology to solve business challenges. It also um, allows for um, learning in, uh, technology principles and applying them strategically to business needs. Again, we have an amazing faculty and industry experts teaching these courses. And you'll also get the experiential learning through the industry practicum that I mentioned for both finance and analytics, business analytics, the same is true for information systems. So you do get that uh, industry experience. The information system program is again STEM designated. So you get the 12 months of OPT and two year extension. 
It is a flexible full-time and part-time option. The schedule is the same, evening and Saturday classes, cohort style. It is 48 units to complete the degree, again, unit-based tuition. And some of the core courses that you're going to take would be object-oriented software design. Um, you also take some system modeling, uh, software development and life cycles, as well as uh, database man management using fundamentals of SQL. Um, and then database management with design, development, and administration, along with data analytics. Now, your business core courses are going to be financial and man managerial accounting, as well as information system strategy and management. And you'll also have uh, the option of 16 units of electives. Again, we have many different types of electives for all of our programs, but some of the uh, electives that you can take would be artificial intelligence, um, computer forensics, visualization using Tableau, natural language processing, and mobile payment app development. And you can take um, what we call tracks in information systems. Um, so if you're interested in analytics, you might take all the electives that are around that um, topic, um, as well as um, enterprise uh, software development or say, for instance, uh, computer security. You don't have to uh, uh, declare a track, but we do have a number of electives that um, tend to fall in these um, different track topics. So um, entirely up to you. You can take them all from one specific track or you can kind of pick and choose and, and do a broad um, elective choice. Again, all full-time students are required to participate in the industry practicum or capstone project. 90% of our MSIS graduates were fully employed at six months out of graduation. And some of the most commonly pursued roles would be data analysts, uh, business intelligence analyst, uh, data engineer, uh, database developer, um, product engineer. So those are some of the most common roles um, pursued after graduation. Um, our graduates are working at places that you all know of, uh, LinkedIn, Amazon, Yahoo, McGaffey, Applied Materials, just to name a few. Let's talk a little bit about the admissions process. Uh, it is I'm here to, to help you and guide you through that process and I'll give you my email address at the end of the presentation. But we really want to make sure that you have a full understanding of the admissions process necessary um, for applying to any of these given programs. We do require a completed online application using Business CAS. Business CAS is a common application for business schools around the country. Uh, makes it convenient for you uh, to complete the application, particularly if you're um, looking at other, um, other programs available. It is a $148 application fee. Um, we do have some waivers for active veterans and um, military. Um, we also uh, require that you have a four-year bachelor's degree from an accredited university or college. We do require the GMAT or the GRE scores, or we do have some limited waivers. When we're looking at these waivers for the GMAT GRE score, we are looking for your quantitative aptitude. So we will ask you for academic transcripts in order for us to make a decision on the GMAT or GRE waiver. If you've received your degree from a school outside the United States, you are required to submit a course-by-course NACE -course evaluation. What is preferred, but we do have a list of other NACE organizations that can prepare that evaluation for you. I do want to say that it does take um, about three months of um, this process. It tends to be a little bit lengthy, um, but now that uh, schools are open and uh, processing for business um, these transcripts. It may take you a little less, but right now um, I always tell applicants to prepare 
um, well in advance for this process. We also require a current resume or CV. If you're not working, no worries. Um, you can certainly put on your resume any academic achievements that you have or any volunteer work or community work as part of your, your resume. We do require two letters of recommendation. I would ask that you think about your recommenders uh, wisely. Choose someone who knows you well and can comment on your uh, preparation for graduate study um, and can comment on your oral skills, your written skills, um, any work projects that you might have worked on, academic projects. So choose someone who knows you well. You would also require a personal statement. So really, this is your opportunity to tell you a little, tell us a little bit about yourself, um, why you're applying for a, a specific program, what experiences do you have. I often tell applicants to think of it in a sort of little, little exercise. Chances are you've mentioned to uh, maybe a colleague or a parent or a sibling, friend, that you're thinking about applying for a graduate program in you know, X uh, specific field. And they probably have asked you, well, why are you applying to this, this program? Or in some cases, why Santa Clara? So think of your responses to those why questions. And then what you wanna do is you wanna craft it in a very clear and, and crisp narrative. Um, that's really a authentic way to tell us a little bit about what your goals and aspirations are. So very important that you take a little bit of time um, completing that, that personal statement. If you use that exercise, it will help you to sort of jot down some notes and then look back and, and you know, just put it in a, in a narrative that really defines who you are and what your goals are. We do have admissions interviews for qualified applicants. Um, it's usually done through Zoom or Skype. So that is part of our admissions process. And then applicants where English is not the native language must demonstrate English proficiency by submitting either the TOEFL, the Dilingual, or the IELTS test. Scholarship, very important. Our scholarship at Santa Clara Levy School of Business is merit-based only. There's no separate application needed for this process. We do ask that you complete um, your application um, by the first deadline, which is April 1st, so that you can be considered for scholarship. We do have a final deadline of May 1st. And then for those interested in MSIS, um, we do have two intakes, fall and winter. Um, for winter quarter, which will be for January 2022, the deadline is November 15th. Tuition and again, deadlines. Uh, we are again, unit-based tuition. Depending on the program, the tuition can be different. So the cost for the MSBA and MS FA program is 1,312 per unit. For MSIS, the tuition-based cost is 1,193 uh, per unit. I do wanna mention that the tuition and fees are subject to change annually. I mentioned the deadlines again, um, priority deadline for scholarship consideration is April 1st. And then we do have a secondary deadline of May 1st for um, fall of 21. Winter deadline, again, November 15th. Okay, we have an amazing career management office on campus. Santa Clara does have a career services office for all students at Santa Clara University. But what we like to brag about at Santa Clara the Levy School of Business is that we have our own career management office specifically for our graduate program. And they will provide you with um, lots of different resources. Um, they will guide you through uh, the steps to use your education for career advancement. So what does that look like? It looks like um, 
sessions such as one-on-one -on -one coaching, uh, mock interviews, you'll get a professional resume review. We have lots of professional development workshops. We boast uh, career fairs. Uh, looks a little bit different during this pandemic, but once we get back on campus, we expect to have our career fairs on, on campus so you can actually meet some of the representatives in person. And we have tons of com uh, company information sessions. So lots of opportunity there. Um, these are resources that every student should take advantage of to give yourself um, the best jump start in your job search. Uh, I'd like to introduce to you virtually, of course, um, Colleen Withers, who's the Assistant Director of Online Programs and Career Programming and Operations, as well as Shauna Strauss, who is on our call right now. Uh, she is the Assistant Director of On-Campus Programs and Career Programming and Operations, specifically uh, for the MS programs, MSBA, MSFA, and MSIS. And I'll let you um, ask questions of Shauna um, once we are done with the uh, presentation. I want to provide you with my contact information. Again, I am here to help you through every step of the application process. So please take down my email address. Um, I'm happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one, uh, advising session if you have uh, you know, additional questions or unique questions uh, specific to you, I'm happy to help. I hold advising sessions uh, three times a week. So please um, feel free to email me if you'd like to set up a one-on-one -on -one session. Happy to do so. I am I really would love to see applicants, um, you know, who are, are interested in our programs and are excited about studying at in Silicon Valley and um, yeah just tag me I'll give you a chance to write down my email address happy to help you so with that I know that you have lots of questions and we want to open it up for you thank you so much Susan yes we have a lot of questions so we'll take a few questions and then maybe uh, Shona would like to continue with the uh, further presentation. So uh, the, I'm just taking up the questions. Students, if you want to ask questions directly, you can please click on the raise hand tab. I will unmute you and you can ask your questions directly to the presenters. So uh, the first question is from Alankrita Singh, and she's asking, do we need work experience for getting into MS program? That's a really good question, and the answer is no. You do not need professional work experience in order to apply to our program. So, you know, we're going to look at your academic work um, and any um, accomplishments that you uh, have during your undergraduate, but work experience is not required. It's, it's preferable, um, and I can tell you that on average, you know, we have about two years of full-time professional work experience, but we have a fair number of applicants and students in the program who uh, came in straight out of undergraduate. Okay. Uh, moving to the next question, this is from Amrita, and she's asking, do you require transcript evaluation for MS Business Analytics program? For all of our programs, whether it be business analytics, finance and analytics, or information systems, if you are educated outside the United States, we require a course-by-course -course evaluation. That can be through any NASIS organization. On our website, we have listed probably about 11 different NASIS organizations. As part of your business CAS application, you can request your course by course evaluation through west.org, which is World Education Services. But yes, we do require the course by course evaluation for the application process. Okay. Uh, moving to the next question, I'm going to take a live question. Uh, this uh, student is Kritika Chandra. Kritika, uh, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Hello. 
Good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, Ma'am, my doubt was, uh, is there any uh, course for three years undergraduate program, like undergraduate students? Yes, there is. So when you do your course by course evaluation, the NASIS organization will look at your coursework that you had, three year coursework, and determine whether or not it's equivalent of the US bachelor's degree. So my understanding is that in India, there are different grades to university. So I, I'm just gonna just say, for, for instance, maybe you have a three year degree in commerce. In some institutions, it is the equivalent of a US bachelor's degree. Again, it depends on your institution. Uh, but I've also seen where that particular degree um, is not the equivalent. So your best bet is to go to west.org. There is a um, equivalency tool on their website. So you would fill in the name of your institution, uh, the, na the exact name of your degree program, the year that you took it, and it will give you um, a cursory uh, determination of whether or not your degree is the equivalent of a U.S. bachelor's degree, which is a requirement for the application process. I would say that most of them are, uh, but that's the best bet for you uh, to make that determination straight out, out the gate. All right, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kritika. I'm moving to next live question. I'm going to unmute Archil Tiwari. Archil, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, I'm from India. And uh, I'm uh, currently pursuing BTEC. And uh, just uh, I want to take an advice from you that I should uh, do GMAT or GRE to uh, get uh, the scholarship uh, or is there any other process to get the scholarship in the business uh, programs? So all of our scholarship is merit-based only. So it's gonna be based on what we're seeing in your, in your application. So we're gonna look at your academic. Um, we do look at um, test scores, GMAT or GRE, TOEFL, et cetera. We'll also look at your letters of recommendation, your personal statement, and any professional experience. That is really what's giving you your final admissions decision. It's a very holistic and comprehensive review. Um, you're not just a score, you're not a GPA, um, you're far more than that. So we wanna make sure that you understand the, um, the reasons why we look at your, your application comprehensively. But I can tell you that anybody who does receive the GMAT or GRE waiver is not eligible for scholarship. So because the scholarship is merit-based, that score is gonna come into play um, when making that, that decision. So anybody who do, does request the um, GMAT, GRE wa e waiver and it is approved would no longer be eligible for a scholarship. Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, sure, ma'am. Thank you for this. Sure. Thank you so much, Achal. And next, I'm going to unmute Tef, Tef Rahman. Uh, Tef, please un uh, unmute yourself and ask your question. OK. Uh, I have an M already have an MBA from my uh, home country, Bangladesh. So if I were, would like to go for the MS in business uh, studies, uh, are it, uh, is it uh, mandatory to give a, uh, or I am eligible for it? Uh, the already have an MBA from a local university, reputed university. Oh yes, absolutely, absolutely. That that's an experience that you can add to your to your application. No worries. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, just another question, I'm already 41 year old. Is it a problem? No, age is no. not a factor in the admissions process at not all. A problem. No, not oh, at all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dev. Uh, 
Next question is from Sushmita. Uh, Sushmita, please unmute yourself and ask your question. M. Sushmita. Hello, ma'am. Good morning. I have a question. I'm just studying second year become. Can I join in? Can I eligible for this? Again, um, as I mentioned, one of the best ways to determine whether or not your three year degree in communications, that seems to be one of the most popular questions that I have, particularly for that major. Um, in any case, you do want to go to west.org and look at the equivalent equivalency tool to make sure that your BA in commerce is in fact the equivalent of a four-year bachelor's degree. As I mentioned, some of the universities in India have different um, grade levels, A, B, C. So depending on your school, your major, the year in which you took it, um, will determine whether or not on the equivalency tool, it'll give you just a rough estimate of whether or not it is the equivalent of a bachelor's degree. So you wanna to go to west.org um, to find that equivalency tool, and that would be probably the best place to start so that you know um, right off the bat whether or not that degree qualifies for an application. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Sushmata. Susan, I just wanted to know, uh, uh, will Shauna be also doing, uh, uh, will also be doing the presentation? Yeah, so Shauna, if you want to pick up some of the um, uh, career professional development um, events that you've had that we can get our students a little bit excited about what to expect. Uh, hi everyone. I sorry I have a little friend with me this morning. This is my daughter. Um, so this is actually a great way to meet you all. Um, my name is Shauna Strauss. I'm the assistant director for graduate business career management, and we have a very robust team of uh, career coaches. We have about five career coaches that are here to meet with you one on one, um, help you with your job search or internship search strategy. And then we have a full team uh, within graduate business career management, uh, and we work year round to design events and workshops for you uh, that are um, meant to uh, tag into specific areas of professional development. Um, so you can attend uh, workshops that are focused on whether it's resume review, LinkedIn review, um, but also more specifically, you know, technical interviewing prep. Um, most recently, we actually had a workshop focused on uh, professional leadership where we did some like role player where, where we worked through um, challenging situations that managers might uh, need to address. Um, we bring in many companies actually for company information sessions. Uh, this week, actually, we have an information session with Intel focused on their um, finance division. So um, that's going to be a really great event. And Susan mentioned our career fair. Um, we did it, of course, virtually this year. Um, so we hope to do it in person. But uh, it was a great event for students to meet with recruiters one-on-one, uh, -on -one, either through information sessions um, or through one-on-one -on -one, uh, meetings as well. So there are lots of opportunities for you to develop your career management skills. Um, and the idea is that we're providing you tools that you can work on to really help you with um, not only your job search or internship search process, but also your personal professional growth um, throughout the program. So hopefully skills you'll use beyond just you know, the one or two years of your program. The other thing that I want to mention to you, and I will send a follow-up to anybody who's on the presentation um, today, uh, we are going to be offering some mock classes. So if you want to get a, a sort of a sneak peek of what it's like to be in one of our classes here at the Levy School of Business, um, the first one that's upcoming is a shallow introduction to um, deep learning. 
What that is, is a form of artificial intelligence. So one of our professors, uh, Sanjeev Das, will be making that presentation. So if you are interested in knowing what it's like to be in a classroom setting, um, in the follow-up uh, email that I'll send to you uh, for those who are attending, I will give you the registration links for those um, sessions that are coming up. We have three that are gonna be in March. That's the first one that's, that's coming up, uh, a shallow introduction to deep learning. I also recommend that you attend one of our information sessions that we have once a month. The information session is a really great opportunity for you to meet the, the faculty director for each of these respective programs. So what they'll do is they'll break off into little breakout rooms and talk a little bit more in depth about the actual curriculum, a little bit more about the industry projects that have been done in their respective programs in the past. Really great opportunity for you to meet the faculty director. Um, with the follow-up email that I'll send again today, I'll make sure that I have the next three information sessions listed on there. It's relatively short, it's about um, 30 to 40 minutes. Um, again, with the faculty director, give you a great opportunity to ask some specific questions um, to the professor. So would encourage you to, to do so. Any other questions? I'm here to I'm here to help and I'm here to answer any burning questions that you might have. Yes, yes Susan, we have questions for you. So uh, I'm going to take a few questions from the Q&A section. Uh, this question is from Kalpana, uh, Kalpana Punya. She's asking, ma'am, what is the name of the site or app that was suggested for comparing the degrees? It's west.org, W-E-S dot O-R-G. OK. Uh, second question is from Bakul. Bakul is asking, GRE or GMAT score is compulsory? If not, on what, what basis? Will it be uh, will it be waived off? Good question. Um, yes, it is required, and we do give limited waivers. The waiver is going to be based on a couple of different things, so respective to your program. So, for instance, if you are interested in business analytics, um, we do have some prerequisites for business analytics, statistics, and calculus. So we're gonna look at your academic transcript to see whether you have that first. Um, second, we're gonna look at the remaining courses that you have on that transcript. So that's gonna determine whether or not um, your GMAT or GRE waiver is going to be approved. Uh, your quantitative aptitude is really important to us on the GMAT and the GRE. We use it as a tool. It's not the only determining factor of whether you're admitted or, or not. Um, but it is important because these are quantitatively based programs. So we need to be able to um, determine your, your quantitative aptitude and those test scores really help us in that, in that endeavor. But um, yes, we do have some limited um, waivers available. Again, if you do get the GMAT or GRE waiver, you're no longer eligible for scholarship. So I just wanna, um, you know, point that out okay uh, moving to the next question this is from uh, Geetika uh, and she's asking that uh, LOR and SOPs are compulsory while we are filing up the application yes they are uh, we require two letters of recommendation and then your personal statement okay mm, moving to the next question this is from Sanjana Satish and she's asking, what is the average GMAT score required for MS admissions? And is TOEFL compulsory for MS admissions? Uh, good question. So on the GMAT or the GRE in the verbal section, anybody who scores 50% or above is waived from taking the TOEFL, Dilingual, or IELTS. Um, so again, that's 50% or above. Uh, the GMAT and GRE averages can um, you know, waiver from year to year, but roughly you're looking at a 620 on the GMAT and at least a 309 on the GRE um, for the averages. Okay, um, moving to the next question. This is uh, from Shubham. Shubham, he's asking, if a student has uh, studied from an English medium school, 
does the student require an IELTS and TOEFL score also? Yes, the university policy is that meeting level of instruction it is not eligible for um, the waiver. So yes, you would have to still take that um, TOEFL, Dolingo, or IELTS, unless of course you score 50% or above on the English um, verbal section of the GRE or GMAT. Okay, uh, next I'm going to take a live question. This is from Santosh Kumar. Santosh, I'm unmuting you. Please unmute yourself and ask your question. Yeah, uh, I hope you're able to hear me. Yes. Yes. Uh, well, uh, my question is based on the um, is on scholarship. What is the average uh, range of scholarship that you give in terms of dollars? Um, is there a particular range? Uh, that means this is this is the basic scholarship that you give. This is the highest that students generally receive. A uh, good question. Uh, it can vary. Again, it's going to be on the strength of your application. So some of the same criteria that we're looking to make a decision on your application is the same criteria we're using for scholarship. I would say that the average scholarship is about $3,000 total that you must use in your first year. Um, the range can vary from, you know, 1,000 and we've gone as high as 10,000. So it really just depends on your application. All right, thank you so much. Answers my question. Thank you. Thank you so much, Santosh. Our next question is from Ankush, and he's asking uh, once I apply to the university, once I file the application to the university, how much time uh, will it will I uh, will it take for me to receive the I-20? Once you're admitted into the program, we will send you all the documents necessary uh, for you to um, apply for the, the F1 visa. Once we get that those materials in, it usually takes between 15 to 20 days uh, to get your I-20 so that you can make a appointment at the embassy. Uh, I know that they do send electronically your CVIS number, so it would allow you to get um, that number to make the appointment prior to actually getting the, the physical documents that are mailed to you. Um, but yeah, you're looking at about 15 to 20 days. Okay. Uh, next question is from Humphrey and he's asking, uh, uh, can an applicant be assigned a career coach to assist them with the application process? Okay, okay say that one more time. So he's asking, can an applicant be assigned a career coach to assist them with the application process? Um, I am here to help you through the process itself. Um, however, there's, there's a, a little bit of a fine line between that. Um, so in other words, um, I've had uh, applicants ask me in the past to please review their um, personal statement. Um, that's one thing that really should be specific to an individual. So I can give you some general um, uh, advice about um, applying, but I won't review a personal statement or a resume. That really should be the work of the applicant. I can give you advice about um, studying for the test. I can give you some advice about things that you should put on your personal statement or even direct you to some, to some templates for uh, preparing your resume. But you gotta keep in mind that your application is really a reflection of yourself, and so it should be your own work. But I'm here to offer any type of advice that you might have uh, about the process itself. But I stop short of actually um, individually um, providing um, help on specific items. So I hope that answers that question. Okay, uh, moving to the last question of this session. Uh, this question is asked by Anand Deshmukh and he's asking, what if my home country college gives me English uh, proficiency certificate, will TOEFL IELTS still be required by the university? 
in order for you to get the waiver from the TOEFL, it, your, your program has to be entirely taught in English, not a median um, level of instruction, but entirely in English. So if you do have a university that, that, that offers that, um, yes, we will ask for that um, information. It must come directly from the university. I haven't seen many um, like that, but yes, if it isn't taught entirely, not median level, but entirely, then yes, we will waive the TOEFL, Duolingo, or IELTS test. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Susan, there are a few questions which are very common, so I'm going to take those questions before we end up uh, with the session. Uh, first question is that, uh, are the programs for September 21 going to be on campus or are going to be hybrid or online? So this is the common question asked by students. Absolutely. Um, as Toby mentioned, we are already preparing to have students return very slowly in spring quarter. We expect in fall of 2021 that we will be um, entirely on campus. Of course, none of us have a crystal ball and cannot determine um, the future, but that's really um, what we are hoping and expecting to happen. Okay, uh, the next question is uh, regarding the application fee waiver. So students are asking what, if we apply, what will be the application fee? And if there are so, some chances of, you know, waiving of the application fee for them? The application fee is 148 US dollars. Um, at the moment, we do not have any application fee waivers. Okay, so, um, Thank you so much, Susan, for answering those questions. Um, thank you so much, Toby. Thank you so much, Shauna, for taking out time today and you know, uh, sharing the insight about the program and the university. I hope this is going to really help students in applying to the university. So thank you all three of you for joining in today. And thank you so much, students, for joining in today. And you know, um, I hope this session has helped you in some way in applying to the university for September. 2021 intake. Um, before uh, we take a pause, I would request Susan or Toby if you want to share something with the students. Absolutely. I'll, I'll go first. Sorry to jump in. Um, we're really excited. And as uh, Toby mentioned, we have a very diverse uh, students at the Levy School of Business. You're very important to us. I know that this has been some challenging times and COVID, of course, has been on the minds of many of our uh, applicants. Um, I just want to just let you know that I'm here to help you through, again, the admissions process. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, following up on this uh, webinar, of course, I will be sending you a links where you can sign up for a one-to-one uh, -one advising session, as well as an opportunity to sign up for our information sessions, as well as our mock classes that we're going to be offering in in March. So I hope to to hear from you. Um, again, I'm very excited about the prospects of you becoming an applicant to our program. And just basically, I'm, I'm here to, to help you through that process. Toby. Yeah, I just, just want to say again, thank you. Thank you for joining us this evening. I know uh, there's a lot going on in your lives. So I really appreciate you taking the time to, to talk more, hear more about Santa Clara University. We are a strong community. Uh, we really get to know our students on a deep level. Uh, when we're on campus, Susan and I and Sean and my other great staff and faculty really walk the halls and really build that really strong rapport, which I think is very important to mention as well because uh, there are a lot of great schools out there. Uh, but I think keep in mind the numbers because there are some very large schools out there and you would get kind of lost in a larger school. But here at Santa Clara, uh, with with 9,000 total yeah. students at the university between undergrad and grad, and just 800 and change for the grad business, you are not a number. You're a you're a name and a student and part of our vibrant community. So definitely look forward to seeing you. Any questions, Susan's phenomenal. So by all means, feel free to email her or, or, or Skype her or Zoom her. And of course, I put in the chat my email as well. But hopefully, see application and uh, best of luck to you all. Thank you so much. Uh, Shona, you would like to share, uh, add something before we close? 
Uh, yeah, I just wanted to thank you all for your time and uh, questions, of course. And um, if you have any career related questions, I'm happy to help there as well. So thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Susan, Toby and Shona for taking out time. And thank you so much students for joining in today. I hope that your questions have been answered. Otherwise, Siksha, uh, Siksha counselors are there to help you with the application process. In case you face any problem, they will they are there, they are the intermediary who will connect you with the university. So thank you so much and have a great night. Have a great evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.